Hello guys, it's Airsick Hydra here. This video is going to be for those of you who are a little bit on the fence and hearing and seeing some, some negative comments about Warhammer Inquisitor Martyr. I'm basically going to clear up some of the misinformation that's floating around the comment section because there is a lot of misinformation and misguided people as to what's actually happening in the Alpha and what's going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear that up today and we're going to purge some of these heretic comments. But we're going to do this in a nice friendly way because people obviously have been misinformed slightly in certain circumstances. Not by the devs, mind you, not by the devs. But we're going to clear this up. Right, let's get to work. So the first major thing that I think has been completely misunderstood by many players is that this is a staged release. So we're seeing lots of comments about, let's take this one for example, looks like a reskin of Diablo 3 without the loot customization story cinematics. Let's take a look at another one. Where the hell is the loot? Isn't this what an ARPG is all about? Ah, this person's onto something. It's because of the build. This is a staged release, so we have been given a set piece of the game to test, okay? The devs have said, they have said that this game is actually more or less built completely. They're just currently testing piece by piece, hence the words staged release. They're testing the game this way, which makes a lot more sense rather than throwing a full build at someone in an alpha and saying, there you go guys, test that, and going, oh my god, the game doesn't work. So what we're doing is week by week, little small tiny chunks, and these comments were actually taken from the pre-alpha build. This is slightly the problem of having alpha footage released. I'm surprised the devs actually allowed it in the first place, but they did, so we have done it. But I think it really is important that the streamers and people talking about it say that this is a chunk of the game. This is not the finished game. Take for example our next comment here, gameplay seems pretty slow, hopefully it changes when it's out of alpha footage. You know, for a Diablo-like game this, well it, yeah I agree with you, it does actually seem rather slow. But what we have to take into account here is, we're playing level 1, this is the equivalent of the lowest level of gameplay, so I'd like to take you back to your Diablo comparison for a second here. Think back to when you were level 1 in Diablo, Path of Exile, anything like that. You're walking around, clicking one button, it's exactly the same as this. Although I would say there's a lot more variety already in skills. Straight away in this game you can pick up 20 different weapons and have 20 different classes as such, or subclasses. So, straight away I think this is a little bit unfair to say a game looks slow when you're playing at the very earliest of the game. By end game, if it's at this pace, I completely agree with you, it will be too slow and not too interesting, but from the changes we've seen already in the last two weeks in terms of patches, certain things in terms of the gameplay's elements has and have increased. There also is, and the developers have stated, that some of the animations that look slow and clunky, they're aiming to smooth and make into sort of a more, well, a more fluid game. So. Next we're going to talk about something slightly linked with this, the people that, well, they wanted to be able to make their own Inquisitor. I don't blame you because they've pitched an open world concept here, and they've pitched this as being endless replayability, lots of different hours, but they have also pitched it as an ARPG, and I think a lot of people are coming to this expecting an RPG, and the two things are quite different. Now the reason is, you take an RPG, which is typically single player, you're not involved with anyone else, you take Skyrim, you take the, all of the Elder Scrolls games for example, there's so much customization there, but that's fine because you never see anyone else, so it doesn't matter if an ability is overpowered, the, the, all of the little fine minutiae, all the combination of skills and abilities, it doesn't even matter if something's broken, that's fine. The moment you have multiplayer though, the very moment you have co-op, you have PvP. Having completely flexible classes like that is a huge risk and a nightmare to manage. So that's why most ARPGs are skill-based and therefore you have a class system. This is nothing new. But I think for the people that think there's not a lot of customization, you also need to actually read the roadmap because you can change the looks of your Inquisitor. 
You can change the equipment of your Inquisitor, everything down from the armor to the weapons. And there is a lot of different combination of weapons. There's going to be crafting. So one other thing as well is the developers, I believe, and I may be wrong, said that there will be visual crafting of your character. So you may, might be wrong here, you might be able to be a man or woman. You might be able to be black, brown, Cuban, Asian, whatever you want to be. It could be a lot more customization. There could be a lot more customization in the future. But watch the roadmap. Don't just criticise the game if you don't know what the end game features are going to be. See what it's going to have and then go. Again, just a problem of having alpha footage floating around. Now, moving on from this, we have those that feel like we've been ripped off. We have been given an unfinished product, an unfinished product that is shady at best and it's not even really a tech demo or a game and it's immoral to charge people money for the testers. Now, some of these people here have clearly misinterpreted what an alpha is. The issue here is that Steam has destroyed what it is to be an alpha. They have ruined the word alpha completely. A Steam alpha is typically a half-baked game where the developers desperately need money to be able to finish it, and what you have is exactly what they've created. So you can't blame people for thinking this, because that on Steam is typically what an alpha is. But I am so grateful, I am so grateful that they have actually charged us money for this. And I'll tell you why. Because people like this won't be playing the game. They won't come in and say, you know what, this is a half arse game, I can't be bothered with this. They haven't actually taken the time just to read the damn bio that the devs have put up to realise that this is a staged release where we're giving feedback on the game. Not just bug finding, we're giving feedback on the game and they're shaping the game around that feedback. And, again, I'll just emphasise the game has already been created, so we're just testing it piece by piece. So if you don't like this piece, wait a few weeks, come back and see it when it's a bigger picture. But don't just accuse the developers of trying to rip people off when, in actual fact, they're trying to give us an opportunity to give them some feedback. And they've done a really good job of it. So far, more or less everything I've put in the forums, such as giving enemies more abilities, um, making enemy densities a little bit different. They've changed a lot so far, just in two weeks. They're really trying to do um, what they can to make the game follow the vision of the players as well as the devs. So hats off to them, clap, clap, clap. Now, moving on, moving on. Um, one more comment I just had to read here. It's going back to a previous um, issue of the ARPG slash MMO dilemma. Rather than letting us create our own customised Inquisitor to explore an infinite galaxy, every single person who buys this endlessly replayable game will have to play the same three to four characters. Play other ARPGs, buddy. Just play some other ARPGs and you will realise you have to have classes. They can be very loose, but even Path of Exile with its loads of customization and pretty free-flowing character system still has classes because you have to govern things somehow you have to have an element of control over your characters or you end up with a shitstorm of messy abilities and messy characters no one having a clear vision of what they're doing it's fine if you want a game like that but this doesn't suit an ARPG so wait for another game wait for an Elder Scrolls ish version of this this won't be for you now we're going to move on to a completely different type of criticism of the game now. There is a lot of talk, and I think kind of rightly so, of people that are saying that certain enemies in the game are underplayed a little bit. So first you've got the, the, the people such as this, which I think is a fairly fair comment that the demonic threats seem a little underplayed. There's no alarms and scary bells. Well, to be honest, you're going on to an invaded space station, so I'm not sure why an alarm would be sounding. I would assume that Nurgle would have turned the alarms off, assuming they know how. But, um, you know, it's just a little bit of a boring enemy to fight against when, oh, it should be a demon. The dilemma here is the devs are faced with a choice. They can give you access to all of the various enemies in an ARPG setting, or they can try and stick to the rule book and have everything done by the law and it, it's it's a toss up here because you're, you're not going to win you cannot make everyone happy they're trying to please at the moment more of the ARPG fans by giving us all of the classic enemies but still having them sort of killable in an ARPG way that being said 
The difficulty of certain enemies does need to be tweaked, definitely. Some are too easy, some are too hard, but if every demon took you half an hour to kill and, you know, left you writhing on the floor riddled with disease, it wouldn't be an ARPG anymore. It would be a survival horror. So you can't really expect survival horror me mechanics and you can't really expect a, an enemy like a plague bearer to be a boss because then the game just wouldn't get anywhere and you wouldn't see anything interesting it would just be incredibly dull um, then we've got the uh, the law diehards and, and I do understand this inquisitors wouldn't be able to kill a dreadnought let alone hellbrute even if they're in terminator armor technically that is correct but if we stick to the law what we're basically doing then is playing the board game in a digital version which is which is boring I'm gonna be honest with you they're trying to appeal to a wide audience here they may well suck in a lot of players that are new to Warhammer you're not gonna do that if you stick to the rule book and have oh enemies bigger than me I can't kill him I might as well pack my suitcase and go home it's it's a toss-up here you, you there's no way you can make everyone happy with this but I really do feel that they're trying to please the masses rather than the 1% of players that are going to be offended by these things. I'm sorry if you're one of the people that are offended. They may well tweak the enemy health bars and when the difficulty levels get tweaked, maybe that Dreadnought will be super difficult to kill and, and you'll be satisfied with that. But in the meantime, I myself am quite happy that they've gone with this route because it makes the game just a lot more visually impressive. It makes it feel like Warhammer and it also indulges a little bit of that that fantasy element you know when you're a kid you dream about being a space marine you dream about going around the galaxy well i did anyway and purging absolutely anything i still a little bit now want to go around the galaxy purging everything so that wraps up the most common criticisms i will go through there are a couple of other feedback issues within in-game mechanics as well such as the gameplay looking a bit boring and a bit dull and I have to say, the alpha testers have given the devs the same feedback. Their responses, or rather our suggestions first, have often been things like, OK, let's make some of the enemies a bit more elite, let's give some of the enemies abilities you have to dodge. And you know what the devs said? They said, yeah, that's stuff we're, we're going to implement in the upcoming patches. And they've already started doing this. So if you're finding the gameplay looking a little bit dull, don't worry about it. The stuff that is going to make this into an ARPG is already being implemented and we're actually due a really big patch in a coming day or two and I will be doing a patch note review so stay tuned for that but if you're not liking the look of it stay tuned and come back soon one other thing I'd also like to mention is all of the footage so far is on one class which is the tank class and therefore if you don't like a tank style gameplay come back when there's some other classes to look at Obviously the class is flexible, you can be melee, you can be ranged, you can be damage orientated, etc. But it's the slowest of the classes, the Crusader. He has the slowest movement speed and the slowest combat style. So come back when the Assassin is out and things may be quicker. Also come out when the game's a little bit further developed and there's movement speed items as well. So the TLDR from all of that blurb that we've just gone through is give the devs a chance guys, they've actually made the game, we're doing a phased testing here to make sure the game works and to give them feedback feature by feature to make sure everything is appropriate. Hopefully you look at the roadmap and you can see the content that's coming up and any questions you've got about stuff that seems to be missing, I think you will most likely find it's going to be implemented. There are very few features in this game that are missing comparing this to other ARPGs. If not, it seems to have a lot more features on the roadmap. And just one last thing, for those of you that are saying the devs aren't sticking to the roadmap, well, we're in the alpha and they are. So sorry, they're actually holding up their end of the bargain at the mo no naysayers there so heresy purge for today hopefully some of you guys that are on the fence have a little bit more faith in the game now but again check back on a month check back in a few weeks keep in touch with my channel i will be giving loads and loads of regular updates so stay tuned remember to like and subscribe the video share it with your friends if they're on the fence and you want to get them involved too and watch out for my really feckin awesome logo that's coming out in a few days take care guys see you around